Hello, this video is about the use of acetaminophen as part of the post-operative pain control management for dogs. Let me be very clear that acetaminophen should never be given to a cat. A single dose of acetaminophen can put a cat into fatal liver failure. So acetaminophen should never be given to a cat. Dogs, on the other hand, can tolerate it. Now acetaminophen, which goes under the brand name of Tylenol, and then is also available as a number of generic brands. Um, it's not my preferred pain control drug, but there are circumstances where we can't use meloxicam, which is the one I would go to as my first choice, such as if your dog is on steroids or has had a, a negative reaction to meloxicam in the past. So if we're uh, suggesting the use of Tylenol or acetaminophen, it's because we've deemed meloxicam to be inappropriate for your dog. Now, the other thing to be aware of is that Tylenol brand and many of the generics come as combination drugs. So um, Tylenol for back pain or Tylenol sinus and cold and so forth. And all of these have other ingredients, whether it's muscle relaxants or caffeine or decongestants. So if we're going to be using acetaminophen for your dog's post-operative pain management, I want you to be certain that what you're using is straight acetaminophen, that it has no other active ingredients, no muscle relaxants, no decongestants, no caffeine, nothing else, just plain straight acetaminophen. Now the dose for dogs is 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight every 12 hours. In humans, it's much more frequent than that. But in dogs, we're going every 12 hours, no more than two doses per day. And the dose should be as close to the 10 milligrams per kilogram as we can get it, although there is some leeway there. One of the challenges with using acetaminophen is it doesn't come in a wide variety of sizes. We have a few options to choose from, um, but it may be difficult to dose just the right amount. Uh, for instance, the Tylenol brand uh, in the regular strength is 32 and a half milligrams, which would be good for a 32 and a half kilogram dog, or say roughly a 30 to 35 kilogram dog. And those tablets are round and unscored, so they would be very difficult to break in half if we had a 15 kilogram dog. Um, if we only wanted to give half a pill, it would be hard to break those 325s down the middle. The extra strength tablets are 500 milligrams, which would be good for a 50 kilogram dog. Now in some of the generic brands, they are as an elongated caplet, and it might be easier for you to break those in half. So now we have 250 milligrams per half, good for a 25 kilogram dog. The children's strength of chewable tablets are, um, let me just recheck my dose here. The children's strength are, I'm gonna need my glasses for a second here. Children's strength um, chewable tablets are 160 milligrams. So good for a 16 kilogram dog. They're scored, so they can be broken in half. We get down to 80 milligrams, good for an eight kilogram dog. But they're quick dissolved, so we've gotta make sure that uh, we get them down quickly so that they don't dissolve in the mouth and the dog foam and spit some of it out. One other option is the children's liquid, which comes as um, 160 milligrams per five milliliters, or 32 milligrams per ml. So in one cc or one milliliter, that's good for a 3.2 kilogram dog. And we can scale up from that. But giving liquid uh, medication can be troublesome, uh, particularly when one of the main instructions that you're going to have for your pet, if it's had oral surgery, is I do not want you touching the mouth at all for two weeks. So all medications must be hidden in something that your pet will eat voluntarily. With a, a tablet or a portion of a tablet, we would have you um, hide the, the pill in something that your dog enjoys, whether it's a, a bit of uh, peanut butter or cream cheese or a piece of a wiener, bury it in a bit of bread and put some cheese or something enticing on the bread, something that your dog will take voluntarily from your hand and swallow whole or with minimal chewing. When it comes to using the liquid, uh, the children's liquid, you could squirt a small amount of it onto a bit of bread, let it soak into the bread, and give them that as a treat. And again, if you need to make the bread more enticing, feel free to add some peanut butter or cream cheese or something like that onto the bread 
uh, as an incentive for them to eat it. So there, there are various tricks and uh, methods to get around the dosing, but um, if we have any questions or concerns, then we may need to talk on the phone and, and discuss how we're going to um, get the right dose for your animal. Um, one other precaution though with the children's, uh, both the tablets, uh, the chewable tablets and the liquid, they come in various flavors. And I was looking at the ingredients and it didn't say specifically, but we know that some dogs cannot tolerate grapes, that grapes should never be given to dogs. Um, it's, it's not all dogs, but um, some dogs, if they get even a single grape, it can put them into fatal kidney failure. And so I would avoid any product uh, designed for humans that is grape flavored. Chances are the flavor is artificial, but just in case, and, and we don't know what it is in grapes that causes this toxicity to some dogs, but just to be on the safe side, don't use grape flavored products at all. Um, so in, in many instances, we'll have given the first dose uh, prior to discharging your pet and we'll give you instructions on when to give the second dose. And then after that, it's morning and evening uh, for four more days. Uh, depending on the size of your animal, we may not have had the correct dose in hospital. So you may have to give the first dose as soon as you get home. Um, but again, as with all medications, we can discuss the specifics about your pet. And if you have any questions or concerns, please get in touch with us. Um, before doing anything else to make sure that we get this right. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.